So when I first started um, teaching yoga, I so I'd been raised Catholic and Primitive Baptist. So basically, I was going to hell in a handbasket in either one of the religions for anything that I had done, right? Um, and there was a point in my life where I completely rebelled against every bit of God, religion, spirituality, that whole nine yards, right? I was an atheist, for lack of better terminology, but I didn't even want to be a part of their damn group either, right? So, um, so I started yoga, and I actually started yoga as that kind of mind frame. I didn't start yoga as one of these super spiritual or religious zealots, right? I was like, no, oh, you need to prove this to me. I come from Missouri. I come from the show me state. Frank, I need to know why you think this, right? And so when I entered into a yoga practice, all the woo-woo did not speak to me. But if you could tell me scientifically why meditation worked or why a yoga posture worked beyond just like building your muscles or flexibility, I could get behind that, right? And once I learned more and more science and, uh, you know, eased out of my 20s into really realizing what the construct of this world is, um, made me believe in magic more, right? And so I don't put a label on it. And as a matter of fact, uh, old texts of yoga do not put a label on God either. Um, so not trying to offend anybody, just fair warning, just giving you information um, and personal experience. You know, they call God the absolute in yoga. Why? Because there's nothing outside of God, the generator, the operator, the destroyer. And so whether you believe we um, are downloaded into a three-dimensional matrix that, you know, or you believe that we are God created and whichever Dharma, whether it be Muslim or Jewish or Christian Dharma that you follow, the science behind it still kind of is the same. You know, there's this magical creation of it, of, of, reality around us that is like 99% possibility, <laughs> probability, right, um, quantum physics, and that, you know, it's a, it, as we are in our present moment, we get to experience this really strange thing, right, so you can be atheist, you can be deeply religious, but regardless, there's something there, right, and so how does that play into anatomy and into physical practice? Well, the short of it, just real short, a physical posture, if you think about body language, if you see someone sitting somewhere like this, most people would think that they are very sad or like you had some kind of heart trauma. You can actually see this and out in the wild as well, you know, anytime there's like this sadness or this heart ache, right? You'll see this position where you can see it now in cell phones, same difference, right? So body language informs our mind and our mind informs our body language. It's just like computer loop, right? And so uh, people who are timid, have a body language. People who are confident will have a body language. And there's a complete energy that's, that swirls around both of those body languages that are read by you, that are read by me as the person giving off that personal body language, and by the brain. And so the brain is like in this constant chemical release system trying to mimic whatever's going along with the world. And so if your body language is that of sorrow or heartache or depression or sadness or 
this kind of collapse protectiveness of the heart, then your chemicals in your body are going to be that way, right? And so yoga just on a, um, a biological level that, that holding that warrior position reinforms the brain of like pumping out different chemicals, right? So that's your first science behind asana or the physical practice. Then there's the aspect of the physical practice where the mind is trained on, are my arms straight? Are my shoulders relaxed? Is my breath coming through my rib cage? Is my second toe here? Is my knee here? Which goes into another biochemical process of self-care. It brings you into the now moment. It um, actually makes your body feel better because you are in alignment, not straining things. So here goes another level of chemical information to this human avatar, right? All right, so next level of anatomy tying into the science of why meditation and spirituality and stuff is valuable is that I've talked about it, talking about the breath, when we were doing different types of breath work. The breath is the backdoor hack to, to every response in your body. So whether it's uh, your uh, pulmonary system, whether it's your nervous system, your endocrine system, your digestive system, you don't have direct control of that. However, you can tap in and control the breath for a small amount of time and different circumstances, which the breath is a huge informant to all those other processes, like the heart rate will follow the breath, right? The thoughts will calm when the breath calms. You know, the digestive system kicks up when you get into that mind frame, right? So there's a lot of aspects that happen in the body on a, on a um, system, operating system level that can be controlled with the breath itself. So you have to think about it. It's kind of, it's like put sweet <laughs> for those of you who run businesses or post to se several social medias, right? You have one platform that control, controls them all. It's the ring, <laughs> you know, that controls them all, right? And so that's another reason for paying attention and using anatomy to tether into this space, right? Um, <laughs> and then I'll give you a great one for me personally. When I learned what chakras were, that chakras were actually nerve plexus that be different organs and uh, different spaces within the body along the spine. And when you feel good and balanced in all of those, then generally your well being, you know, your digestive system's working well. You know, you have good connection with the strength of your legs. You're not over overly active in your stress response system. So these are the things that brought me to the fact of like, wow, there's a lot of, there's a lot of magic to the way that I work and inform myself of the world around me. And then if you want to go down the rabbit hole even more, you know, like I said, we're in a space of, <laughs> you know, 99% possibility or probability and only when we check on it does it appear for us, which is just like, you know, down the woo-woo level, right? But it's true. That's not solid. You are levitating, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use the scientific aspect. We're going to use the alignment aspect. We're going to use the focus on the breath. We're going to go completely no woo-woo today with our practice. And in that way, you can see how all the automated responses of the body come into a line. So whether you're trying to connect spiritually or you're just trying to calm down a little bit, yoga can work for you, right? This, this process, this outline can work for you, right? So I'm about to kick my dog off the mat. Those of you joining me on Facebook, um, I'm going to do some simple movement with you guys, and then I'll probably click you guys off. But I want you to get an understanding what I mean by paying attention and what's going on. All right. All right, Loki, let's get out. <laughs> 
Levez. Levez. Ah. Oh. Go. Uh, uh. Thank you. I'll take the rope. Go somewhere else. All right. So as everyone comes standing tall, if I brush on my dog hair off my mat. All right. So standing tall, and hopefully you're on a mat. Feet are about four inches apart. Hands are along the sides. Palms are facing forward. So I'd like you to close your eyes for a moment and just feel your na natural stance. Do you feel like gravity is pulling you down? Or do you feel like there's like a little bit of lift from your inner arches, inner thighs, inner waistline, sides of the neck, right? And so do you feel like gravity is winning or you're winning? All right, let me escape this good old out. I'm gonna ask you. Yeah. All right. So as you feel that lift, no, out. As you feel that lift, breathing in through the nose, out through the nose. So, what do you feel when you breathe? Can you feel the movement of the breath? Do you feel like you're using your shoulders? I'm not telling you to change anything. I'm telling you to pay attention, right? And so train your mind just like a muscle or anything else to pay attention to what you want to pay attention to. And you are choosing the breath at this moment, right? Just noticing what's happening, maybe even noticing how we have this natural rock back and forth, right? It happens, especially when your eyes are closed. Maybe even take your feet with big toes together today. Heels have just a little bit of space between them. And then close your eyes and feel that natural sway that happens within the body. Feel if your head is forward of your heart, just like mine was just a moment ago, right? Just feel everything start to settle around the experience of standing here in the breath. Notice how you have this natural kind of rock in your feet where you might put more weight to one side of the foot or the front of the foot or the back of the foot. It's just natural. What I want you to do as you experience it, imagine like you had a, a pendulum hanging from the center of you in your perineum. What, um, what design would it draw on the floor, right? And now watching that natural movement, not trying to control it, just focus on the breath at this point. And so start to draw the low belly back a little bit, keeping the shoulders down a little bit. And just let the breath fluctuate in and out through the barrel of the rib cage. So the belly activates just enough to keep the breath from dropping down below the navel. And the shoulders and the shoulder blades activate down and slightly together just enough to keep the shoulders from rising as you inhale. Just enough activation to hold those two points. And now feel the breath coming in through the back ribs, then spreading to the side ribs, and then spreading across the chest without lifting the rib cage itself, but keeping that rib cage knitted in by keeping the low belly from accepting the inhale. As you exhale, you'll feel that low belly slightly activate more than it does on the inhale, but you're gonna feel the back of the throat lift up on that exhale. That's allowing the shoulder blades to relax without releasing completely. 
Now continue to watch as you breathe, keeping the container of the breath in through the rib cage. And as you do that, notice how now that natural swaying has centered up and come very, very still. You do have swaying, it's only because you've like forgotten about the breath itself. You'll notice that you'll feel very balanced. You'll feel as though that pendulum has started to draw smaller circles, right? And so this is the biomechanics. This is the kinetic energy of the breath linking throughout the whole body. Each inhale has a certain set of muscles that fire up for balancing the body while the breath is coming in. And then the exhale is connected to the juxtaposition muscles to keep it balanced while the breath is going out. Okay. And notice how as you're doing this, you're standing naturally taller, you're standing naturally more open. We're going to try to carry that experience of a physical posture through the rest of our class. As you inhale, keep the shoulders down, keep the breath in the barrel of the ribcage, keep the navel slightly drawing back as you lift those arms up. As you exhale, forward fold with control all the way down onto the mat, putting the hands onto the Floor. Curling into your legs. Bring your hands onto your shins. Feel that same open chest, that breath, that cinched in waist and shoulders away from the ears. As you exhale, still feeling the back of your throat lengthen as you step back with your left foot to low lunge. On your inhale, you're going to keep the breath in through the barrel of the rib cage. You're going to lift your fingers, keeping that navel slightly tight, those shoulders back, walk line from head to back heel. Hands will go down onto the mat, and you're going to step back to your down dog. Heels don't necessarily go to the earth on this one. Index fingers and thumbs do, though. On your inhale, you're going to float to your plank position, drop to your knees. On your exhale, shift the weight forward so you have this long line from shoulders to knees, right? And the hips are breaking that plane. From here, you're going to feel the exhale as you bring those little T-Rex arms in and lower all the way down to the mat. Once you're down, you're going to bring those legs together feet together, heels even together, push the hips down, roll the shoulder heads back, puff the heart a little bit, tent up onto the fingertips, right? So we've got little Adam's family fingers here, squeezing the legs together, hollow out the low belly. On your exhale, you're going to press back to your down dog. On your inhale, you'll take your left foot to the ceiling, reach it up without spinning the hip open today. As you exhale, your left foot will step by left thumb. If it doesn't make it and stops halfway to its lunge, you're gonna bring it up as you inhale. Those of you who already brought it up, your inhale will float. Do you have a decision here to make? Do you float or do you adjust in that inhale? Hands go down, you'll bring the back foot to the top of the mat and forward fold, trying to keep that narrow base if possible today. On your inhale, your hands will come to your shins, you'll flatten your back. You'll feel that body language of an open heart, right? Open the chest. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, experience the breath as you come all the way up. And then feel the exhale as the feet plant into the mat, paying attention to this moment, not any other. Bringing your hands onto your shins. Inhale, left halfway up, coarsening the waistline, making your low back feel better. Hands down as the right foot steps back to that low lunge. Now inhale, you can float the hands here if you like, really rooting through that front foot. On your exhale, your hands are going to go down and you're going to step back to your down dog. 
On your inhale, you're going to float to your plank position, drop to your knees if you would like. On your exhale, you're going to lower all the way down. We're going to come to that T-Rex arm, fingertips down like you're playing a piano, squeezing the elbows back, squeezing the inner thighs together. Heart is lifted, back is working for four, three, even your pinky toes are down, two, and one. On your exhale, move back to your down dog or your dog says hello. As you inhale, take your right leg to the sky. Notice it go up. As you exhale, your right foot is going to step up. If it doesn't stop, if it doesn't make it, you bring it up and adjust it in the inhale. Those of you who already brought it up, you can float if you'd like. On your next exhale, you're going to bring the back foot to the top of the mat. Get that narrow base. Look at your toes. Are they at 12 o'clock as you fold? Hands come to shins. Feel your back nice and flat. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, comes all the way up. Reach up, stretch up. And then exhale, hands at the sides, close the eyes. So those of you who are joining me on Facebook, notice, or everybody who's joining me, notice how your mind is calm. Your breath is a little more relaxed than when you started with me. Your body might feel a little better just doing those simple breaths. So this is how a biomechanical, this is a kinetic way of making your body feel good so you don't have to drop into just the spiritual side of it but i hope that you see the magic in the way the body works those of you joining me on facebook if you'd like to join us for full classes where um, you can sign up through our website if you have any questions feel free to ask me um, in the comments below we'll see you later those of you who are um with me in the live class. Let's go ahead and come back to that space of our breath. We're gonna inhale and sweep those arms upward. On your exhale, you're gonna swan dive forward, fold, melt over the legs. Feel the inhale, notice where your second toes are. Pay attention to this moment. And then exhale, put the hands down. Left foot will step back. Inhale, you'll float your low lunge. You have the strength in this front leg. On your exhale, experience the breath as you step back to your down dog. Inhale, float to your plank position. Drop to your knees if you would like. Exhale, lowers all the way down. Tops of the feet flip over and onto the mat. The legs and heels come together. The shoulders roll back. You're going to tent up onto your fingertips. Maybe even come towards a king cobra here. For four, legs are strong. Three, two, and one. Releases into your down dog with your exhale. Feel how the breath affects the body. On your next inhale, float the left leg up. With the exhales, bring it all the way to the top of the mat. Inhale, you either adjust the foot or float the heart, whichever space you are at. Hands down, step forward, forward fold. See if you can bring those big toes together today. Hands to shins, inhale. Halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold again. Inhale, comes all the way up, reaches up, stretches up. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold, melt over the legs. Bringing the hands onto the shins. Inhale, halfway up, flat back. Exhale, hands down, right foot reaches back. Feel the foot reach back, feel it land. Feel the inhale as you press the floor away and float this posture. On your exhale, your hands are going to go down. Step back to your down dog. Inhale, float to plank position. Drop to your knees. Exhale, lowers all the way down. Legs come together. 
tops of the feet down, fingertips, cupped palms, lift King Cobra. Exhale, lowers. Moving back to your down dog. Inhale, right foot high. Exhale, right foot. My right thumb, help it up if you need to. Inhale, float. Exhale, hands down, step forward, and fold into your legs. Hands to shins, inhale, halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, all the way up, reach up, stretch up. Hands at the sides, mountain pose. If your big toes aren't together already, can you please bring them together for me now? We'll have about a little half inch space in between your heels. On your inhale, sit back into your chair pose. Reach those arms out and those hips back. On your exhale, forward fold. On your inhale, lift halfway. On your exhale, hands are flat. Step back through your chaturanga, only lowering halfway down. Come to the tops of your feet. Lift your legs up dog. Heart reaches up. Tuck the toes under, move back to a down dog. Now you can stay here or go to a child's pose if you'd like. We're here for five rounds of breath. So inhale one and notice the breath. Exhale. Inhale two. Inhale three, and so we're still paying attention to the container of the breath. The low belly is still drawing back, the shoulders are not moving. And on your next exhale, I want you to lift your heels and walk as far as you can with flat hands. Big toes come together, and once you're at the top of the mat, hands will stay flat even if you need to bend the knees. Right? Bring those hands to your shins and held them halfway up. And exhale forward fold. Inhale comes all the way up, reaches up. Hands come at the sides, mountain pose. So we're going to do a little bit of a shtanga type practice today. Um, as a matter of fact, this is the type of practice we're doing every day. The poses um, are the same. The, the energy and the focus of the practice um, change. So you're going to step out with your right foot. Make sure that you can see me um, if you're stepping out with your right foot. Your second toes are at 12 o'clock and your arms are floating. Your feet are about the distance of forearms, mid-forearms, right? We're going to take the right foot and turn it towards the back of the room. Um, hope that didn't mess up the video. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, we have so many phones, right? All right, so excuse me, guys. Right foot turns, toes are at 12 o'clock, arms are out. You're going to sink the inner right hip in, slide out over that right leg. Let's come into triangle pose. So notice that the back of my hand is pressing to the inner uh, calf muscle, and I'm looking up at my left arm. Those of you who have a floor or a block that you feel comfortable reaching for, you may do so. You can even grab a hold of the big toe. Turning and walking up at the top hand, what is your breath like? Are you still able to keep the low belly tight and the shoulders moving down so that the breath is only moving through the back ribs, the side ribs, the front of the chest? As you turn and look up even more, Stretch up even more as though that top hand is trying to reach your ceiling. On your next inhale, you'll use the breath to come up. We're going to tick top and we're going to come into the other side. Right? So as we come into the other side, we're going to turn and look up at the top hand, in through the nose and out through the nose. How much can you reach up with your right hand? How much can you keep that belly back? 
and then utilize your next inhale to come up. We're going to tick tock the feet so that the right foot points again to the back of the mat. This time we're gonna lift the back heel. We're going to bring the left elbow over the right knee and then the hands will be in prayer like this, right? And so as the hands are in prayer, now if you need to modify this pose, you'll put the left hand down and the right arm will go high. And so turning into your crescent twist, turning your chest into your right leg, looking up at the top thumb, opening up, reinforming the body of a different kind of stance today, a very open chest with very strong legs. Use your next inhale to come all the way up out of that pose as you pivot to do the exact same pose on the other side. So either your right hand is down, the left hand is high, or you've got your hands in prayer and it's that crescent twist in through the nose, out through the nose. Feeling the breath extend as though you can feel the top of your head and your back heel trying to move away from one another. And then utilize your next inhale Feel the inhale carry you up to face that right side of the mat with the toes at 12 o'clock, arms are floating out like they were in the beginning of that sequence. From here, you're gonna to turn to step to the top of your mat into your mountain pose. We're going to inhale, big toes are into chair, or big toes are together for our chair. You're gonna press your pinky fingers together. You're gonna to press the balls of the feet down so that the low belly cinches back for four more, three, two, and one. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, forward fold. We're gonna come all the way back up, inhale. Let those hands go down along the side. So we're gonna go through our next balance. Our next series is a balance series. So let's bring our big toes together. First, I'm gonna show you this, what the movements are, and then I'm gonna have you zero in on that breath work that we were doing earlier. So the sequence is as such, you'll stand on the left foot first, you'll bring the right knee up, the hand will be onto the kneecap, the left hand will be onto the waistline, we'll be here on the fifth breath, we move out to the side, and then on the fifth breath, we all come back center, and we all extend the leg straight, no matter what, right? Those of you who wanna grab a hold of your toe, you're more than welcome to. All right, so come to big toes together in that standing position that we were utilizing earlier in class to find our balance and find what's going on. And so as you close your eyes, first notice that you are naturally moving around, right? Because you just now probably centered back in on the breath. It might not be as much movement as it was in the beginning of class. But as you start to center in, drawing that low belly back and keeping the breath contained within the rib cage and not floating up into the shoulders or floating way down into the low belly, you'll notice that you're stabilizing. So two aspects of that is that the movement is always there and you're not freaking out about it. So don't freak out about it when you're on one foot. And then two, the breath is what controls the balance, so it's not the foot. So as we come into this, open up your eyes, realize balance comes from breath, not gripping, and realize that the happy ankle dance happens anyway. And so happy ankle dance on the left foot, we're gonna bring the right knee up, and notice my foot looks nice and active, as though I'm about to step onto a large box, right? in this standing leg is active. I'm actually standing up. I'm not, like I talked about before, gravity pulling me down. I'm reinforming my body of a different body language, right? And with that, I'm gonna open it up even more and inform it of Captain Morgan. <laughs> right. And so as you open up that right knee, maybe the vision goes over your left shoulder 
feeling the breath, feel that natural rock that happens. Don't fight against the natural movements and come center. Everybody brings your hands to your hips and you'll straighten that leg out. Natural movements, but now feel how when you exhale, it helps you hold that leg up more. As you inhale, make sure you're standing up tall, getting oxygen to this leg so it's not cramping on you. As you exhale, it feel, you can feel this right leg hold up even more for three, two, and one. Let it down. And so that's how the breath, beyond just centering your mind in for meditation, can help you in an actual physical practice. Going into the other side, so doing the same thing you did on one side, all those mirror imaging your um, your yoga posture. So lots of pain on my hand today. I just realized that that's my artistic stuff, right? Hopefully you guys are enjoying some art too. And so from here, we're gonna open that leg out to the side. Maybe the vision goes over the right shoulder. I'm not trying to control the balance from the foot. It's all in the breath. It's all in the hips. And then as you bring it back forward, everybody brings hands to both hips and everybody takes that leg straight. As you extend out, you feel the exhale help you hold this leg up. As you inhale, you feel some oxygen come to your right standing leg. And release, shake that all off. And so maybe you start to um, feel your mind and your breath feeling a little brighter, a little more like, okay, go on for a little bit more, right? Take this into your day. So feel the breath, feel the movement as you reach those arms up. Enjoy that. As you exhale, or fold. As you bring the hands onto your shins, you're going to come halfway up. As you exhale, you're going to put the hands down, and we're just going to step back to a down dog. Right. On our inhale, we're going to float to a push-up position. Some of you might drop to your knees, and you're going to lower all the way down. Once you're down, I'd like you to, um, we're going to do some skydiver, and we're really going to try to strengthen our back muscles. So I'd like you to take your hands off the sides of your mat as though you're doing a push-up. So notice my hands are wide, so this is more like a military push-up. And notice my elbows are trying to line up with my shoulders and my wrists for the most part. I'm going to take a moment to roll those shoulder heads back. So now I'm like a turtle sticking my head out of the shell. I've got a little bit of hand grip here, right? I'm gonna bring my feet together big toes and heels and bend the knees. And as I do that, I'm gonna press my hips down to lift those knees up, and I'm gonna squeeze the shoulder blades together to pull the hands off the floor. Breathing here, she feel like a skydiver. Those of you who want to go a little deeper can reach back and grab the feet if you'd like. At that point, you try to straighten the legs yep. for four, three, two, and one. Keep a hold of the legs if you can. Turn your head to the right. Let those heels come into your bow. Relax the hips. Notice if you're naturally gripping somewhere around your back or your hips. See if you can breathe into that space and relax. Turn your head the opposite direction. Wonderful. Crawl the legs closer together. Bring the heels and the big toes together. Try to straighten the legs again. Lifting up both bones. And 
and release. Holding on to those feet, turn to the left first. Now, bring the forehead down, the feet together, and try to lift the feet only, the legs only. Forehead stays down, lift. And release. Turn to your right, relax the glutes. Turn to the left. Release the left leg, then the right. Let the body start to melt into the mat, turn the head to the right. Wonderful. Come up center, bring your big toes together. And as you bring the big toes together, keep your knees wide. I'm gonna turn away from me for just a second so that you can see I'm trying to kind of sickle my feet in around my bum. And I'm going to lean, try to get my butt in between those heels. Stop it in there, right? All right. So that the heels are uh, being aligned with uh, the butt being in between it, right? Rather than them rolling up. Now you can choose to go back as far as you want. Um, if you have like blankets and pillows and blocks, one of the options. <laughs> this is called double saddle, so you should feel like wide, like you're sitting in a saddle. Um, you could take. A block behind you. Too far behind you. There we go. And lay back over it. Just make sure that the shoulders are not coming into the ears. We're really wanting to focus on opening the feet, the shins, the knees, the thighs, all the way up to the hips. A lot of people ask me where they should feel this. I'm like, well, that just depends. If your feet are flexible and open, and you're, um, you, you'll feel it in. So it starts off feet flexibility. If you're feeling it in your feet, there's some aspect of strength or flexibility that you need to engage in your feet. Um, ankles are next. Shins, knees are a big thing. Most people, um, that's where they first get their um, little talking points on this posture. Uh, and then, then finally, you'll feel it in the quads and in the inner hips once you lay all the way back. But it's not necessarily the goal. We want to build a posture from the floor up. We want to pay attention to what we're doing so much so that when we need to pay attention when we're not on the mat, we can do that as well. So go ahead and come forward. We're going to swing those legs around in front of you. All right. Just checking my time. We're giving a little bit of love to the knees. Oh, knees, I still love you. All right. All right. Um, those of you who don't have walks, it's not necessarily necessary to have walks, but it's nice. If you do have walks, you put them so that they line up like mid-thigh and to your knee, right? not back by your butt. So what we're going to do is do the final hip openers and the postures in Shavasana. You're going to take, um, let's go ahead and start with, or in a strong, excuse me, right foot interior, like we're doing tree posture. The left leg is long, the left foot is um, active, and the left thigh is pressing to the earth. 
So there's nothing relaxed here. As I take my hands forward and try to reach either the leg or the foot, I begin to pull myself into the posture without like hyperextending. I'm still, my foot still looks like it can stand on the floor with a live arch and stuff. So staying here nice and strong in our stretch for four more. Deep breath in. Exhale. So as you take a, your next deep breath in, notice how it makes the stretch more intense. Hold it for a moment. The, the intensity will back off. And once the intensity of the stretch backs off, you exhale and either move a little deeper into the posture or just stay there and feel good for the next round of inhale to come in, make it feel deeper, make it feel more intense just by utilizing the breath itself, holding at the apex of that inhale until the exhale naturally comes. It feels as though you've reached the apex of that stretch and now you can release deeper. Do that three more times. So there's that little juicy pause between the inhales and the exhales. Kumbaka. No, probably a piece of that. All right, inhale, come up. We're gonna take the right leg, we're gonna cross it over the left, right there at those ankles. We're gonna squeeze the knees into our chest. Notice I'm not rounding my back, I'm actually trying to once again, each exhale, navel comes in, back of the neck lifts. Each inhale, I keep the navel back. I keep those shoulders down, and I feel the breath just going through the back ribs, the side ribs, the front of the chest. Now, exhale, the back of the neck grows long, the belly comes in. On your next inhale, you're going to put the hands down, keep the shoulders down, see if you can lift your butt, put it back down. Coming back into this shavasana, uh, shavasana into this uh, balancing on your butt as you extend now the left leg forward, the right, uh, the right leg forward, the left leg comes in, and you come back into that hip opener. So battery, I need all kinds of warnings on my phone. Wonderful. All right. So from here, as you continue to work deeper into that hip opener, deeper into that space where you're moving over that leg, each inhale makes the stretch more intense. Each exhale allows you to slide into the posture a little more. Wonderful. On your next inhale, you're going to lift up. We're going to cross that left ankle over the right. We're going to pull those knees into the chest. We're really trying to close the gap between our chest and our thighs. Our arms are out in front of us. Each exhale cinches up the waist, grows long in the back of the throat. Each inhale keeps the breath in the barrel of the rib cage. And now as you exhale this next round, get that belly tight, the back of the neck long. On your inhale, lift. Exhale, puts it down. Soles of the feet come together now. We're going to reach forward into our cobbler's pose. So peel the feet open, right? And that will help the knees go down today, right? Elbows can go back. You can really extend the chest past the toes if you have that ability. Now go back into that breath, that deep inhale in, holding, really pausing, holding is in a good term but feeling the intensity of the stretch. Rise, rise, rise. And then exhale, see if you can move a little deeper, relax a little more in the posture, focus a little more in the posture. As you continue to breathe here, close your eyes.
Wonderful. Take one last good round of inhale. Hold it for as long as you can. And then exhale, let it all go. Wonderful, guys. Go ahead and come to a seated position. I'm going to ask you to get your dog out of the way. If I'm not done, I know you don't understand because we're not at the studio yet. All right, so crack the backs of your legs. Rock and roll head to tail several times. All right, wonderful. From this space, I'm going to ask you to um, take a blanket or a pillow or something that will get your butt up. We're doing a supported, supported shoulder stand. So that means your butt is a little higher than your heart and legs are up. You can also put your legs up the wall. Notice that I'm keeping my shoulders down and I'm still keeping the breath through the container of the rib cage. I'm even going to bring my hands onto my low belly so that I can make sure that the breath isn't entering into the belly. For each inhale, I'm going to feel this extension from head to foot. And so my feet are going to feel like they're reaching up to the sky, and my head is feeling like it's reaching to the wall that's, you know, at the crown of me. Each exhale will feel the back of the neck grow longer and that low belly cinch in. Continue to breathe here, imagining the expansion on the inhale and that supportive contraction on the exhale. So you're going to stay here for several more rounds of breath, feeling that continued expansion. Those of you who want to do full-fledged supported shoulder seating and know how to do that on your own practice are always welcome to take your, take your practice up some if you would like. So go three more rounds of breath. And after that third round of breath, I'm going to ask you to pull whatever prop is underneath you, lay flat on your back without any movement. So don't wiggle and worm. Just come onto your back like you're moving to Shavasana with no extra little twisting or anything. And notice the body settle after that inversion. And notice what happens to your legs. Notice how you feel the blood flow kind of level out again. It's an enjoyable feeling that we tend to ignore because we're moving through our life and our practice so fast. And so really sinking into that sinking in feeling, right? Feels good. Feel the body melt. And it's an experience that you have to slow down to see. And it's ultimately the magic that yoga is trying to teach us. If you do need any extra wiggles or twists, do them now. Otherwise, we're settling into our meditation at this point. And so as you lay onto your back and move into your meditation, blankets are really appropriate. They tend to, your house tends to be a little chillier than my studio, so it will help you relax. And just the biology of meditation. As soon as your mind goes into theta state, the body starts to cool. So looking at all the little magical things that happen in this last part of your practice, being amazed at the way that Focusing on the breath can make your balance better. Take a little amazement at how just focusing on movement and breath can make your whole body and mind feel better than when you started. 
and even lay here with this open heart that feels like a, a space of gratitude for being able to physically practice, you know, um, being healthy enough, both physically and mentally. And there's a lot of joy, and there's a lot of magic in every single moment that's around us. Whether it's noticing where our second toe is, or noticing the smile in a friend's face, there's magic in every single thing we do. And yoga is just asking us to cut down on all the information we're trying to process and see some of the things that are already there. And so whatever is already there for whatever gratitude you have in your heart, gratitude for your physical practice, gratitude for your health or your, your family or, you know, food in your belly, a roof over your head. There's so many beautiful things to be grateful for. That science of slowing down and the science of mindfulness can actually open up that spiritual connected place in you. And so whether it's a sense of connection to God or connection to community, even just a little connection to who you are today, make that connection sacred. Breathe into that space. Let any walls go as you exhale. Breathe in to the space of openness, that open heart. Feel it expand you just as though it did in that stretch, but really expand your heart as though you're trying to fill the room with that essence of it, which you feel in the center of you. Each exhale may give a sense of grounding, rooting, coming home, safety. Notice that feeling of coming home, that feeling of safety, that feeling of joy allows you to open up more with each breath. With each inhale, feeling more expansive. And to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Begin to create small movements that are natural to you. Utilize the next inhale to roll over onto whatever side feels best to you. And then using that next inhale to roll up your eyes close to a seated position. Sitting tall, still keeping the breath in the container of the rib cage. Not as much activity in the belly or the shoulders. It's naturally just staying there now. 
As we inhale and sweep those arms upward. We exhale and drop those hands in prayer in front of our chest. Thank you so much for joining me for practice this morning. Let your minds be open, your hearts full. Namaste, friends.